Hi guys, in the previous videos we got so far that we are able to create queries such as that where we pick um, the field names that we need uh, and we can have our where statements with some or some quite complex where statements which combine multiple ands and ors together and we're also able to order or sort our um, query uh, by specific fields. Now, what I'm going to be talking about here is performance and how can we enhance or optimize the performance of our database. There is something we have not done yet with our database and that is provided with an index or indices. Now, what is an index? Um, a good analogy of an index is, let's say you're looking for a web page and you don't know, you know the link or the URL of the web page. So what do you do? you search in Google through some keywords relevant to that web page. And then Google serves you uh, a list of pages and hopefully among these you'll find the web page you've been originally looking for. Um, Google in this instance is acting as an index and what Google has done, it has done all the pre-work for you. It has scanned a lot of the World Wide Web it has sifted through the content of each of these individual web pages. It has taken this content and cataloged it into multiple keywords. And so that when you come along and input those keywords or any keyword, you would get those pages relevant to the keywords you've input. And exactly in the same way, database, a database index works. When I index a certain field like product name, what happens is that the database um, catalogs all the content found in, uh, in, this, in this field and catalogs it in the background in a, in, a, in, a, in a table you as a user don't see. So the next time you're looking for something in product names, i.e. Uh, you know, product names not null, the database would look in its index and then serve back those product names where which are not null. And index is always related to a specific field. Now the question is, which fields do I index? Why don't I index the whole database? Why don't I index all fields? Well, indexing all fields would, first of all, make the database ultra heavy because you're, you're basically doubling up the data once the data you see and once in the index. Another thing, it doesn't add to the efficiency. You've got to pick the fields you're continuously searching in, and those fields are the ones you should index. And it is always a balance. I mean, if you're indexing too few fields or just the wrong fields, then you will not get any performance enhancements. And if you're indexing too many fields, again, you're not getting any performance enhancements. So it's always sort of a balance. And if you look at this query here, where we're searching in our basically countries, we're searching a lot in countries in quantity, proteins, uh, product name, and maybe those fields in here. So, so that's that. Those are then the candidates where I would say, yeah, let me create my my index, my index based on these fields. Now, how do I create an index? Let me just comment this uh, query out. And the way I create an index is basically I start with create, then index, then I need to have an index name, i.e. index name, uh, yep. and then on, and then I need to input the table name, whatever that may be, and then after the table name, in parentheses, I have to input the field name or the name of the field which actually gets this index and obviously then close that with a semicolon. So if I comment this thing out and let me show you a real index. So basically create index and then what's all I, I'd like call your index, your indices, whatever you want or indexes, whatever you want. But I prefer to have the name that the word index underscore and then the name of the field. In this case, let's say I wish to index the, the field product name, so I go product name, and then on, I just copy the table name, 
And then in parentheses, I just copy the field name. And then semicolon. So that is the way you create an index. And let me do, let me, cre let me create the other indices that we need. So I got these here, and then I just run the query. Now that's gonna take some time around on this on this machine in Postgres around 30 40 seconds right and we got it 41 seconds so now I have my indices now where do I find my indices or how do I know if my table's got any indices or indexes here uh, in tables you go to the relevant table and you have here a field indices now we have created our indices but it seems they're still not here you, you can always refresh and you click on with the right with the right mouse button and you just um, you know, uh, go and refresh. And now you can see there are my indexes or indices. Right. So that's the way you create indexes. And if I uncomment uh, that section again and run it, then, um, oh, I just left that thing. And run it, then I my query should then work and it should work faster. Now, mind you, in, uh, with Postgres, you often have the case that you run a query without any indices, and then you add some indexes or indices, and then you run the query again, and it's slower afterwards, or, or faster, or, or, or no change. Don't forget that um, Postgres is a, is a server, and it caches. So it could be that your query is cached, and that's why it runs faster the next time. Um, the only way to check performance in, um, in Postgres is basically to restart the server or basically restart your machine. That's the only way to do it. Um, another way to do it, what I personally use, is I use SQLite. And let's run our query in SQLite. Now here's SQLite. You see there are no indices at all. So I just go into SQL. And I've got this exact same query here. Remember, we have exactly the same table as, as here, and I just run it, and that's gonna take a while. So now we got it, and it took like um, 70, 70,000, 70,994 milliseconds. So basically around 70 seconds. So now let me, uh, let's create those indices here. And let's run it. So I just created the indices. Now, uh, what I can do just to avoid any caching issues or so, I just save the database, go to file, write changes. It is saved and I just restarted or closed and opened the database. You can see here I have my indices. Now let's run the same query again. So I got it here and let's go. And you can see here now, we use the time of 38247. Remember, the other time was like 17994. So we really have the time by using indices. So that shows you the power of indices. It also hopefully shows you the difference in performance between SQLite and a database server like Postgres. I mean, this query we ran in Postgres for around uh, initially, when I when no without any indices or nothing, it ran for 12 seconds, and now I'm getting it in two seconds. So, and here we need like 38 seconds. So it shows you that on the same machine, you get huge a huge performance gap between SQLite database and and uh, and uh, you know a database servers like like Postgres or MySQL and so on. So, uh, you know where possible, use a use a database server, and you know where you know the data is really small, then you could get away with SQLite. So hopefully you can see the, the effects of, of indices or that indices have on, on, a, on a database performance. Now, uh, the last question is, how do I remove an index? Well, uh, let me comment that stuff out again. And to remove an index is very simple. You just use the keyword drop and then index and then the index name, index name, and then obviously semicolon. So basically if I need to drop an index, or let's say if I need to drop all the indices that I've just created, that is sort of 
the way you drop an index. And right now you can see them here, there are nine. If I run that query and it's done, and I, if I go refresh, then I just lost my indices. So that's the way you index a database. And hopefully you've seen the performance an index or indices bring. We've seen it in the SQLite example. It will basically have the query time. And um, the same effect is, is also in, um, in database servers like, like Postgres. You just cannot measure it uh, as simply as, uh, as with SQLite because of these caching issues. But the effects are still the same. And like I said, you always got to balance what you index and what you don't index. Um, that's why I say test a lot. And what I do, I test a lot in SQLite where I, you know, index some fields and remove indices. You can also in SQLite, by the way, you can also remove an index by just right clicking it and delete. So uh, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of testing to be done, especially with bigger databases where performance issues are important. And I would test it with, with an SQLite database. And actually, you don't need to have the whole data set in an SQLite database. You can just have a subset of, of the data set typically found in your database server. But SQLite is a good testing environment for indexing.